If you're a beginner and you're looking for a video to teach you how to use Capture One Pro to transform your pictures from this to this, then you clicked on the right video. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to use Capture Pro from start to finish, from importing your files, editing the pictures, and exporting them for your favorite platform. Let's get into it. All right, so the first step to edit your pictures is to create a session. So in Capture One, you can either create a session or a catalog. A catalog is basically a collection of all your pictures while a session is for a defined project. I personally prefer using sessions because they are self-contained folders, which make it easier to manage your files and share your work. To create a new session, click on File, New Session, and choose the location of your new session. Press OK and you have a new Capture One session created. Now this Capture One session has several folders, but three are particularly interesting to us. The Capture folder, the Select folder, and the Output folder. In order for you to import the pictures that you want to work on, you will place them into your Capture folder and you will be able to visualize them directly in Capture One. Now it is time to select what pictures you want to edit. In order to do so, I usually use a rating system where I will rate the pictures that I took from one to five using the keys on my keyboards, one, two, three, four, five. Then I will organize them by rating and move all the pictures that I want to work on in my select folders. That way you can easily separate your best pictures from the random pictures that you took on a day and it makes it easier for you to organize everything. All right, so now let's move to the edit. So the first step that I, I want you to take is to check the film simulation that are available. Capture One Pro comes with all the film simulation that are available for your Fujifilm camera, for example, Eterna, Classic Chrome, and many more. So check out the different film simulation available before you start the edit because this will give you a good base to edit on top of. Just select the film simulation that gives you the closest results to what you're trying to achieve and once you're done with that let's move to cropping and rotating your picture all right so in order to crop your picture i want you to hold your click on this cropping tool right here and you will have different aspect ratio for this example we want to select four by five because that is the aspect ratio that is used for instagram Move your mouse to your picture and adjust your composition accordingly. We're then gonna move to rotating your picture to make sure that the horizontal line is aligned with the horizon. To do so, you have two options. You can either do it manually with the rotate freehand or you can do it using the align tool. So before we move further in the editing process, if you enjoyed the video so far, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Help me reach my 10K subscribers goal for this year. Thank you so much. And let's go back to the video. All right, so now it's time to introduce you to layers. You can apply your edits directly to those layers. It makes it easier to separate your different edit process to enable or disable a layer to see the effect that this particular edit has on your picture and to clarify the whole process because it is clear in your head what each action is doing. To create a new layer, hold click on this plus icon right here and create a new fill layer. I want you then to double click on the name of the layer and rename it as exposure. We're then gonna move on this type right here which contains basically all the tools that you need to play with the exposure of your picture. Exposure, contrast, tint, temperature, shadows, highlights, but also clarity and structure, which is basically the amount of details that you have in your shot, vignette, and also a curve diagram that you can play with to do micro adjustment to your picture. So let's start playing with our image to make sure that we get the result that we want. So with this image, I basically want to make sure that my sky is not too overexposed and that my foreground is also not as dark as it is right now. So I will increase slightly the shadows, make sure to decrease a bit the highlights, play with the contrast to make sure that I don't have too much contrast in my picture because that's my style. I like a low contrast picture. Decrease the clarity to have a softer look to my picture because that's how I like it and increase the structure to basically push back some details in it. Of course, you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. I'm just showing you here how I would move those sliders if it was to edit my own pictures. Play around with the sliders and see what's working for you. All right, so once you are satisfied with the overall exposure of your picture, it's time to move to color grading. Color grading is basically adding colors within your shadows, midtones, and highlights of your picture. To do so, create a new field layer and name it color grade. Go to the color tab of Capture One and go all the way down to the color balance. Here, as you see, you have shadow, midtone, and highlights. What I like to do for this is add a bit of orange 
orange color in my shadows and some light blue in my highlights. For the midtones, it depends on the pictures and on the vibe that I want to go for. But I recommend that you just experiment with it and don't necessarily do what I do. So here, we're gonna first select the color that we want to add in our shadows and increase its intensity or decrease it. The other sliders also allow us to boost the lightness of either the shadow, the midtone, or the highlight that we selected. So here I'm adding a bit of orange in my shadow, increasing or decreasing its intensity. Then I do the same for the highlight with the blue. And this is the result of before and after what I see using color grade. This is the power of the layers because I can see exactly what I just did with this layer. All right, so now let's move to the color adjustment. Again, we are gonna create a new fill layer for color adjustment only. So of course, like other softwares, Capture One allow you to play with basic colors, adjusting their hue, their saturation, and their overall brightness. But I prefer using the Advanced tab. The Advanced tab contains a color pick that you can use on your image to directly pick the color that you want to play with. Once you pick the color, you can adjust the smoothness, meaning the range of colors that you are selecting around this particular color, the hue, saturation, and the brightness of this particular color. If you want to make sure of the particular color that you selected, you can also click right here to see the range of color that you selected. So play around with it, play around with the different colors that's in your image. I want to make sure that everything goes towards the blue or the orange side. So I'm going to move the green towards the orange and make sure that this blue is not too saturated. All right, and last but not least, let's talk about local adjustment. So, so far, all the layers that we did were field layer, meaning that they were for the full picture. But if you want to do local adjustment on a certain part of your pictures, it's also possible in Capture One. Create a new empty layer, and you can select one of the tools right here, whether it's a brush, an ellipse, gradient, or even the smart brush, to create your layer. Here, I want to select the skies, so I will use the smart brush to select the sky for me. You can check what mask is applied to your layer by pushing the M key on your keyboard and toggle the mask on and off. So here, I'm just gonna make some small adjustment to the sky to make sure that I sharpen a little bit the summit of Mount Fuji and that the sky pops a little bit in the picture. And there you have it. That's the edit that I want to do for this particular picture. But we are not done yet. Now we still need to export our image and make sure that it's optimized for the platform we want to publish it on. Capture One uses recipes, which is basically a set of settings that you want to save to make sure that you have consistent and optimized images for the different platform that you're using. In our case, we want to publish this picture on Instagram. All right, so to create a new recipe, click on the export button on the left hand corner. Click on the plus button, rename your recipe to JPEG and Instagram because that's the purpose of your recipe. Select a JPEG, quality 100, Adobe RGB because that's what most of the platform out there use. Select width, pixel 1080 because that is the size recommended by Instagram and you're pretty much done. I will also add a subfolder called Instagram in the output folder where everything will be output to make sure that it's easy for you to recognize where the output go. Click on export. And if you go to your output folder, you will see your Instagram folder with your image exported in there. That way you have a repeatable, scalable process and you don't have to choose all the settings all the time. And there you have it. Today you learn how to set up a session, import your images and select the one that you want to work with, use the layer and apply film simulation, cropping, rotation, exposure, color grading, color adjustment, but also local adjustment to your picture. And you also learn how to create recipes. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. And if you've missed it, check out this video right here where I explain you how to shoot Tether using Capture One. See you there.